In September of 2005, I suddenly experienced excruciating pain in my lower back and hip. And for one brief day, I could barely move. I could barely walk. The short five minute separation between the clinic and my residence took me an hour to walk to. This was the first major symptom that started me on a journey of self-discovery, of suffering, pain, and ultimately of enlightenment. I'm young, I'm sick, and I'm invisible. And my story is a skeptic's journey with chronic illness. What followed that one day of pain was a year of relative freedom and in a complete loss of the ability to walk. After I stopped being able to walk, I spent another year desperately trying to get doctors to look past my age to see my symptoms. I tried to get them to stop trying to push drugs on me, specifically painkillers, and to instead find some kind of treatment and some reason for the extreme pain that I suffered with every single step. The act of sitting down felt as though I was dislocating my hip. Every step made me feel as though my leg was about to pressure shatter beneath me. In a few instances, my leg actually gave out completely and I fell to the floor. After a few months, I stopped even being able to move the slow pacing steps that I was able to take with a cane and actually ended up having to take a wheelchair from place to place. I, during that time, was desperate. I would have believed almost anything that anybody would have sold me. And so I get, got to come face to face with a lot of the alternative medicines out there. I got to come face to face with people pushing homeopathy, with people pushing faith healing and religion, with people pushing almost anything you could imagine. I know what it's like to be desperate. I know what it's like to, from time to time, consider completely ending it all. I've faced my death. I have faced my mortality. After my arthritis got treated, after I knew what was going on, a year later, I started experiencing mysterious symptoms. I was losing weight very rapidly. I was going to the bathroom very frequently. I was very nauseous. There was always some explanation. There was food poisoning when my fridge broke. There was suspicion of a liver infection. And yet somehow these symptoms persisted and they persisted and they persisted. At one point, I realized I had lost 60 pounds in two months. And another journey followed of trying to figure out what was wrong with me before I died, before I literally flushed my life down the toilet. There were moments where my body was so starved for nutrients because I couldn't keep a meal down that I would end up lying on the bathroom floor in the middle of summer, in the middle of a, of a heat wave shivering because my body couldn't muster the energy it needed just to heat itself. I have a story to tell and I have a perspective that people need to hear. We talk a lot about alternative medicines, about what it's like to, uh, about, from a theoretical standpoint, what it must be like for people who are sick to be faced with desperate miracle cures and promises. Well, my perspective isn't one of the unaffected observer, but actually from that desperate person. From that person who doesn't know whether they're going to live in two months. 
or whether they're going to have to spend the rest of their life in a hospital hooked up to an IV just so that their body can take in any nutrients. I'm asking for help to help me fund or give me the time to write and publish this story. I want to do this for two reasons. One, because this offers an interesting perspective for my opinion and a new perspective for a lot of people on a lot of issues that, that are pretty mainstream. Homeopathy, alternative medicines, vaccinations, mortality, religion, faith, healing, etc. It offers a perspective of someone who's actually gone through all those things, who's first-hand experienced all of them. Another reason why I want to write this is because I'm not alone out there. There are many people my age or younger than me who are going through the same process of illness. And they need to know that they're not alone and they need to know that there is a cure and that life can continue afterwards. And that just because you're disabled doesn't mean that your life has to end and doesn't mean that you can't be just as driven to pursue your dreams as anybody else. I'm a blogger at Scribbles and Rants. You can find some of my stories there already, including those posted in the links below. Um, I'll even treat you actually to one of my more funny stories here and now. Uh, when I was going through my leg problem at one point when I had to sort of give up and go back home, I was working for uh, an office and one of the clients who came in told me that he could help me. So of course uh, both my mother who's also at the office and I were intrigued and so we let him try. So I'm standing there in her office waiting for him to tell me how he can help me and then he goes and tells me that he's a faith healer. And so at this point I'm stuck in a dilemma because he's a client and I'm at work and I can't exactly just laugh in his face now can I? So I figure what's the worst that can happen? So I'm standing there in front of him and in front of my mother and this old gentleman who must have been late 60s, 70s, 80s, some, somewhere around there, puts one hand on my crotch, the other one on my bum, just like that, and starts praying. Oh God! And he starts rubbing. He starts caressing me as he's praying for the Spirit of God to come down upon me. Now, I don't know whether this guy was just trying to think of a clever way to cop a feel of a young 19 year old, or whether he actually believed what he was doing, but either way, I was absolutely shaking from the effort of trying not to laugh in his face. And when I looked up, it got worse because my mother was sitting there with this horrified look on her face, looked as if she was trapped between desperately trying to laugh and trying to slap this man's hand away from her daughter's crotch. And of course, this man, because I'm shaking, thinks that I'm being filled with the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> And so after that, you know, he thanks me and asks me how I feel, and I don't know what to say. So I say, oh, you know, thank you. I, I'm, I'm better. And I, I, I slowly limp my way over into uh, the other room, and I make my way to the bathroom where I lock the door and just fall on the ground laughing. And this is just one of my stories. I have several. This is a narrative that I suspect will make you laugh, it will make you cry, and I certainly hope will make you think, but the only way it can get there is if I have your help. So I really hope that you will take the time to read through what I've written below 
and hopefully to to donate and if you can't donate I know what it's like to be completely broke um, if you could share it on your Facebook page on a reddit page on Twitter on any other form of social media or even just um, physical media as well that would be wonderful and in return I promise that I will get this story done as fast as humanly possible I want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen to me and um, I hope that together we can make this happen thank you very much and I hope everyone has a great day